Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Hello and welcome to another episode of Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. I'm your host, John Johnson, and in this episode, I'm going to talk about what's your love worth to them. Love. Something that's been created and talked about and done since the beginning of time. And uh, there's a whole lot of interpretations about how it works out, why it doesn't work, what might work for you. I'm going to talk about that right after this. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. And I'm going to talk about what's your love worth to them. And I'm going to talk about it from the concept, really, Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. See, there's a little tie in there. The concept of love, it's that love has been around since the beginning of time. It is what exists and it's on an emotional plane. It's sometimes it defies words and it's about actions. That's the tangible part actions that stuff that happens on the inside that the chemistry that goes on in the body that all of that stuff i mean doctors can explain it the things fire off in your brain and then there's hormones that are all part of that it's a very interesting mix and we spend our lifetime being in that experience but oftentimes we don't even come close to understanding it so part of what this relationship podcast does is we I try to demystify some of these things or at least give you tools to operate within it and then to discover things about yourself and someone else to make your life easier. Some of it is anecdotal. That is, I share some of my own experiences. There are a lot of things that I've learned because I've studied it. There are a lot of things that are just out there and they just happen to come to mind. And I pass that on as information. And I obviously talk to a lot of people on this subject. So it's a lot of fun for me. But when I'm talking about what's your love worth to them, it it starts out with the idea that when you are with somebody, it's oftentimes we forget it's not only about how we feel about them, but it's how we help them feel about themselves when they're in our experience. OK, so what's your love worth to them? How do you bring yourself from thinking about you and making it about them and then you benefit because we're very self-interested we think about love in terms of how it's going to make us feel we we love that that orgasm when we have sex we love thinking about how that person looks and what the things that they're going to do for us whether it's fix our meal whether they're going to buy something for us for christmas are they going to do something for our birthday see it's it all becomes very self-interested But when we think about it in terms of what we have to do to get into that person's life, to get into that experience, we think about it sometimes in the in the in the interim of, okay, I want to start this experience. But then what's it going to take to stay there in their life? Because when it's worth something to them, then they become invested. And oftentimes we might be blind to the idea that, well, 
they have a vested interest and we have to help keep them interested. You don't just show up and then automatically then you're just the person. Says, oh, you know, I'm magic. I'm here. They must love me. No, it doesn't work that way, because, as you know, if you've been in a relationship, these things ebb and flow. You know, there's that honeymoon phase. And I'm sure you're familiar with that word. If you've been in a relationship at any point in time, there's that honeymoon phase. Everything is great. That person is the most beautiful person you've ever seen. And guys can tell you if a man has been in a relationship with an attractive woman, there is that. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, you just get drawn to that. But then there comes that point, too, where I don't care how good looking she is today. She is trouble. So how do you transition that? How do you keep that love hot and keep it going and keep and, 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 keep, and hang on to your relationship? Well, you got to make it worth something to them. I'm talking to the guy. You got to make it worth something to that woman and vice versa. Woman, you got to make it worth something to him. How do we do this? Well, first of all, we get real about the fact that love is not all about us. It's not all about you. It's about, again, like I said, how you make somebody else feel. And that's an investment in time because you have to learn about somebody. That's an investment in your own self because you have to learn how you come off to people. If you're a person that just loves to dictate things that thinks you just because you walk the earth, you point it out, you say it, you order people around. Well, you know what? You may wind up being a very lonely person because that just doesn't work for everyone. It might work in the beginning, but there comes a point in time in life where people just get fed up with your stuff and they're just going to say, uh, uh, I'm done with this. And there comes a point in time in life when you realize you're the old dude in the club that's looking for somebody and you're going to figure out, you can talk about all the dates and relationships you've had, but you don't have one. Now you should have been stacking up that knowledge and figuring out how to make it work for yourself. Cause see, to me, the old dude in the club being the mayor is not the one that you should be asking relationship advice about. He can tell you how to fail. He can't necessarily tell you how to succeed, but going back to this thing about what it is that you're going to do, Making your love worth to them. That does mean that you have to buy gifts for people. That means you have to spend quality time. And when quality time is what do they like to do? What really what do you value? And it's not always about the money. And this is an interesting thing. People that have money often think that you can buy love. Let me tell you, you can buy gifts. And when people want you, they don't want your gifts. They want you. They want your quality time. They want your love and quality time. That's the operative word. Not just saying, okay, we're sitting in the same room, but I'm talking about being interactive, talking about your thoughts, doing something together, creating new memories. That's the quality time I'm talking about, because those are the things that matter. Those are the things that stick with you, because we all know somebody that's got a lot of money that can buy pretty much anything that they want to buy and can lavish somebody with gifts. Players are known for doing stuff like that. And women are players, too. So don't get me wrong. It's not this. This is non-gender specific. I, I know people on both sides of that spectrum. And the, and the interesting thing about people with a lot of money, because they have the means and the resources to do that. Yeah, they work hard for it. And I'm sure that they feel that giving gifts is a thing to do. Well, they may have been brought up with that value. But what I can tell you is that as life goes on, it's about having memories. Those are the things that matter. When you talk about what we did, where do we go? Man, we took this drive somewhere and all kinds of things happen. I'll, I'll give you an example of something that happened to me. It was a, a reflection of love. I had a, a family member that wanted to go to the, to the air races one year. We drove up, had a wonderful time. It was the first time that they had been there, the air races. I exposed them to something that I had been doing for years and didn't realize that I hadn't shared that. But this, this was a family member. So we went up, went to the air races, and on the way back, we wound up stopping for someone that had a flat tire. Now, that may not sound like a big deal, but here's the thing. When we stopped, it, we found out that these people had been on the side of the highway for a better part of a half hour. Two other individuals had stopped, but they didn't have the tools to be able to remove that tire and help these people get on their way. Now, I wound up having to find the tools. We got the tire changed, sent these people on their way, and... So that's a memory that I will have that I'll be able to share with my family member for the rest of the life. They got to see me do something that is to help somebody else. These people that I stopped for 
openly said to me that, you know, they have never been the kind of folks that would stop for somebody on the highway. Say they just would have just driven on, would not have cared. But when they were at the mercy of being stopped on the side of the highway with their baby, no less, they were at the mercy of other people just driving by. And everybody was whizzing by at their at at or above the speed limit. Nobody took the time to stop. Well, what I was able to share with them in terms of being just um, a road warrior like myself, I've driven a lot of miles was to show some love showed them that they were worth taking the time to see what their need was and to get them up on their way. They gave me their phone number saying, anytime I'm traveling through uh, that part of town, they lived, these people lived in Walnut Creek and you know, I was just in the, on the highway between Sacramento and Reno. These people said, Hey, if you ever come through, please stop by. We'd love to buy you dinner. And to be seen in the light of being a helpful person, with my family. That meant a lot to me. What's my love worth to them? Now they value me as much as I've always valued them. This, this was my daughter, by the way. And these people on the side of the highway now have a different take on humanity. Whereas they didn't have the time or the inclination to want to care about anything outside of their little world they now found out what it's like and they were a young couple too. So this has transformed them, I believe into being a different kind of person. So that's the giving of myself. Now take this another step further. And I'm going to get to the romantic part. When I say this is when you have somebody in your life that means something to you and it's about creating an experience for them that they want to love and respect you much the way I created that situation on the side of the highway. Now me personally, my trip back, hey, I'd had a great day. It was about spending the time, just taking it easy, leisurely driving down the highway. And I, I, I could have passed them and gone on, but I know what it's like to be stuck on the side of the highway. So being a good Samaritan, and, 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 it, and let me share this. Being a good Samaritan to me is something that I like to do. I know that that's not everybody's thing because sometimes there are situations that are not, that people don't feel safe. And for that, you can pick something else. You, you, maybe you like to help a homeless person on the side of the street or maybe you volunteer um, for the little league or, or whatever your thing is. But it's about giving. But in this, but I, I, I like to create those situations and do them with people that you care about, your family members, your significant other, because that becomes a shared experience and you have impacted somebody else's life. You see where I'm going with this? This is how this thing grows. This is how you become a part of your community. And by sharing that kind of love, you transform people's lives. That's the bottom line. That's what love is about. And when those moments happen, when you begin to have doubts about what somebody means to you. Let's say you're the person that's doubting, but well, when you've had those memories, you know, it just, all you got to do is start talking about, look at all the time that we've spent together. Look at all the things that we've done. I've, we do this because we, I, I, we, I want to spend time with you because I, and you know what, you look up and you, and you follow that timeline down and pff, man, you've had a good life together and not, it's not always hunky dory. Sometimes you have struggles, but you struggle together. And that means a lot. It means a lot to me. I can look back on many struggles that I've had and the people that have been there for me. And it's, and it's not always about the lovers that have been there. Sometimes it's just about the friendships, about the people that stepped up, just showed up at that moment. That phone call that I got in the middle of the night when somebody was thinking about me or had a great experience with somebody two, three years ago and they call, Hey, you know, we're thinking about you and we've got this project coming up. Wanted to know if you'd like to be part of it. It's like, Oh wow, man, that happened at the right time. So my love, my giving was worth something to someone else because I thought about them at a different time. And that's my investment. That's my investment in my life and other people. And to be able to do that also with my significant other, that's important. That's what I want you to take away from this. It's, it, beca it becomes a great, it, it's, it's a great experience to have when you see that it works that way. It's not rocket science. It's really about applying yourself. Now, 
I'm, I'm going to take it a different direction now. And I'm going to talk about sometimes when it comes to selecting and this has to do with the significant other part when it comes to selecting someone, how doing it the way we have always done it, meaning grabbing that, that emotional tug, that that sexual chemistry, why that has some pitfalls. I'm going to take a little break. I'll be right back after this. Can't decide and torn between a romantic, comedy, action, or an indie film to watch for the weekend? Well, 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 Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast is your ultimate guide to the latest movies. Join Jordan, Keith, and Mariano as the trio dissects what's latest on the blockbusters. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast. And welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. I'm your host, John Johnson. And at the end of that last break, I was talking about how in some, um, about the choices, how we go about choosing our our significant others, our, our lovers. And, um, you know, the thing that comes to mind is in, in Western culture, we're really geared towards that emotional tug, that big thing, that, that chemistry thing that we can't explain, that thing that all of those songs are, are written about. And you know what's funny is there's so many songs written about, if you think about the concept of the tune, it's not just the lyric, but it's so much about dysfunction. <laughs> and if you think about how relationships are so dysfunctional, and sometimes it sort of makes you want to just run the other way. But, uh, you know, there's some cultures where they choose the mate for you based on, um, Based on this, it's something that's probably a little more objective because people that have experienced life seem to be, you know, at least a lot of them consider themselves qualified to judge others. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set aside the concept of that for a bit. But it's in some cultures, they choose the mate for you and you get together with that person and you raise a family, you and you go on about your life. So it's not so much about the romantic, but. At some point in time, those relationships, I mean, you know, they consummate the relationships. I mean, they have sex and they have children and they create those bonds. And, and there's this sort of love that grows. And I've, I've actually talked to people who have been who are from those cultures and have those experiences. And some have said, hey, you know, they've come to Western culture and said, hey, you know, we understand the differences. And, you know, we're but we're I was fine with that. But, you know, if my children, if they wanted to grow up and and choose their own mate, that's perfectly OK with them. So that's someone who's become a little more westernized. But back to this idea of having someone choose your mate for you. And, you know, we have a lot of friends who obviously like to weigh in on our relationships. I mean, considering that when we have things that go wrong for us, who do we turn to? We generally turn to our friends and ask them, well, what do they think? Or, you know, they commiserate and, and we tend to share, you know, swap stories about relationship disasters. I mean, that, you know, that there's a lot of bonding in places over that particular subject. So it almost seems like it's, it's really not a bad idea to let somebody else make the decision for you, at least on the idea that if people that know you pick somebody that is similar to you, then you have a better chance of success at that relationship. You know, the only problem I see with that in some cases is they pick. I think sometimes people would pick somebody for you as based on where you are in life at that moment. And I kind of like to think that at least from the concept of being who I am, thinking about it from this place in life, I would like somebody who, as I get older and have had experience, somebody that also is able to grow with me as well. Now, I, you know, that's just my thought. I don't know that the people who are in the, you're in a system where they choose your mate for you don't consider that. Maybe they do, but that to me, it's, you know, the romance of it. I, I mean, I'm again, I'm from a Western culture, so the romance of it seems more interesting. And, you know, I'm just waxing about this because I figure, you know, how would a Western cultured person be with that idea? But it's it's something that's really interesting to consider because um, you know, the the divorce rate or the separation rate in those cultures, it's not nearly what we have here in the United States. So. It's a different philosophy. 
it works in some cultures and it's but it's you know kind of waxes back and forth so anyway i was just thinking about that and um thought maybe you might give that a try but as as you get older and as you think about what's important to you in the relationships and what you have learned about yourself and your significant other you know could you write a book about that about those experiences and what would you take from that you know at this point in my life i think the thing that i could reflect on is how much i've had to learn about myself in order to be compassionate about someone else that's been a huge that that was huge for me again what did i have to learn about myself in order to be able to be compassionate for someone else here's an example obviously we have experiences in life and when those things turn um when when they're a challenge i was i you know i can be very humble i've obviously had you know breakups in relationships and was being the caretaker that I like to be and would get left and would wonder, you know, what the heck happened. Um, and as I started out by talking about, you know, how, you know, what's my love worth to them? That that's the topic of this. Um, that's the, the topic of this particular episode. And I found out it wasn't worth as much as I thought I wasn't doing the checking in and figuring out and paying attention to the results, action oriented kind of thing. And being the guy that I am, I just figured, hey, because I was there, um, you know, that that should be good enough. I think that they could read my mind and know that I cared and was doing all of these things that I thought valued, you know, showed value. But I wasn't checking in. And ultimately, that relationship would end. And then I try to put it all together and say, well, what the heck happened? Well, here's the compassionate part. I realized that. Uh, when somebody else had a breakup or I realized that I was putting somebody else through the same kind of hoops that I was going through. It was humbling. It was humbling to learn that. And then I, even myself found myself very, it was very difficult for me to deal with conflict. So the, one of the things that I did as I turned to, you know, being, um, I, I wasn't very honest. I wasn't upfront. I would even lie because I couldn't deal with the conflict. So guess what? got busted in the lie and then I had to do damage control and learned what it is that when somebody has trust in you and then to violate that trust that is huge because damage control isn't something that just happens overnight when that happened to me again it was humbling I figured out well I learned how people get into those traps I learned how hard it is to get out of that habit and then when you get out of it, you know, you, you know, what you learn from it is that you don't want to go back. And how do you not go back? Well, you need to remind yourself. And the other thing that I did is um, I gave people permission to call me on stuff. That's humbling, but it's honest. And I grew from that a huge amount. Where was the compassion here? The compassion here is that I've talked to many people who've been in that situation and the thing that I don't do to somebody when, I'm, you know, when we're sharing these conversations, I don't chastise people. I just try to be, you know, be a matter of fact and say, hey, you know, we, you, you've got cause in the matter. And while you may feel like you can justify the, the behavior, um, you can't. You can't just leave it at justifying things all the time. You have to see the impact of what you do and then change yourself because of that. Because what you don't want, obviously, is to be alone. And when you create these things that happen that make people want to not be around you, then you're going to be alone. You're going to be that old guy in the club that's had a bunch of relationships. Oh, he can talk about all the women he had. Or if you're a woman who's had a lot of boyfriends, you can talk about all the relationships you've had, but that's exactly what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing all the talking and people will walk away from you wondering, well, what the heck happened? What's going on in your life now? I mean, and, and you'll find money does not fix that. 
That's the thing. Money does not fix these kinds of problems. You got a personality problem. You got a problem with alcohol. You got a problem with drugs. And maybe having money contributes to the problem. In fact, I say having money actually makes you more of who you are. When you think about that, there's a whole lot of truth in that aspect. You know, if you're a nice person, having a lot of money is not going to make you mean. It's going to make you just as nice. You just tend to probably think about spreading it out more, spreading the love. And if you're a selfish, greedy old Grinch, having more money doesn't make you nicer. It just makes you more of a Grinch. If you all have seen Scrooge, you remember that part of the story where all of a sudden he starts seeing his future because these ghosts come back and they tell him, say, hey, dude, you know, you're going to you're, you're a goner. Nobody's going to give a rat's, you know, what about you? He changes. Now, that happened for a dream through a dream. I mean, it was a great story. I love that story. The guy came out. He was transformed and he realized that what he wanted was love. Good thing he figured it out before he was on his deathbed. But um, anyway, it's enough about that. Look, I'm going to take another break. I'm going to come back. Going to wrap this up. And here we go. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hello there and welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. Again, I'm your host, John Johnson. And today I've been talking about uh, what's your love worth. And I covered a few things from um, understanding how you impact somebody else's life, how you do things with quality time and not just throwing money at them. I even talked a little bit about uh, uh, arranged marriages and uh, how they're, that's, a little, that's a different concept in and getting together, but sometimes those types of relationships work because somebody else gets to choose your mate for you. I also talked a little bit about what it is to be honest and how that impacts somebody else's life and how that can make you someone to choose, someone to be with. Overall, hopefully I've left you with something to think about, something that's worth considering to uh, help change your life and make it for all the better. Uh, knowing how to love someone is, is a lifelong journey. You know, we come into this life having feelings, emotions, having all that. Uh, we're an electrical chemical factory. Everybody is that. And sometimes these things, you know, we don't come necessarily with all the information. We are here to learn and apply yourself. There's a lot to learn. Share your love. Okay. Again, I'm John Johnson, Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. Thank you for joining me.